It's about that time of day again here, boys and girls. Welcome back to your nightly newsletter. Today is September 3rd, 2014. My name is Joseph James, broadcasting live from our corporate headquarters in a very beautiful fall afternoon here in early September in Los Angeles, California. Hope you guys had a great hump day here. We had a very, very active market session this morning, but boy, we definitely settled into some sideways ranges ahead of the highly anticipated ECB report tomorrow morning. We'll talk about exactly what happened today. We got three things to do tonight, right? Get a jam-packed newsletter for you, as always. We'll start out with talking about what happened today. That way you guys know exactly what happened around the world today. We'll take a look at what's happening tomorrow, right? Get a really important Thursday's trading session tomorrow morning. And, of course, we'll save the best for last. We'll finish up today with strategies for you. Trading gold, crude, a little bit of Russell, right? A little E-mini Russell. And you'll be ready by the end of the of the uh, newsletter tonight. You'll be ready for no matter what happens tomorrow, whether the price goes up, down, or sideways, you will be ready for anything. All right? Before we jump into our newsletter for Wednesday evening, I do want to remind you guys, if you're not on our blog right now, if you're watching this video on our YouTube page or anywhere else besides our blog, get on over there to sidewaysmarkets.com. There's a link right below the video if you're watching it on our YouTube page. And I've got three important things for you here over on our blog. First of all, we use these charts every single day in our live trade room. I want to make sure all of my members at School of Trade, as well as all the non-members, have access to all the charts that I'm looking at this evening. I've also added in a lot of bonus charts, just because I don't have time to go over everything here with you in this short video. So make sure you click the link below tonight's video and download all of my day trading charts. If you're a member of mine, bring those with you tomorrow morning into our trade room. Second thing here. Take me up on this offer, guys. This is a very good opportunity here to join our live trade room. If you're not a member of School of Trade just yet, if you're curious how we use these newsletter levels every day in our trade room, I have a special free pass for you. I'd love to invite you to come out and join our trade room tomorrow afternoon or any afternoon and take a look at this with your own two eyes and ears. And you can see exactly how simple it is to find the trend, find the setup, and find the entry pattern. Get a free pass for you upper left hand corner last but not least lower left hand corner right above my ugly mug you'll see a spot there for your name and your email address I'm going to send you a, uh, a, uh, a heads up every night when this newsletter is finished up so join our nightly newsletter mailing list so three things here guys on our blog first below the video download the charts second upper left hand corner grab your free pass to come out and join me in the trade room and third Sign up for our nightly newsletter mailing list. That way you never miss another opportunity. All right. Now that you know the plan here for today, let's roll those sleeves up and let's take a look at what happened today. Well, another exciting session filled with trading opportunities. Once again, we had a great session in our trade room today. Did a bunch of earning, bunch of learning. Now, the market's definitely settled into a sideways range today, likely ahead of tomorrow's highly anticipated ECP report at 7.45 a.m. So tomorrow morning, everyone's going to be focused on that ECB report at 7.45 a.m. They get a big problem with deflation. And, of course, you can see here, looking at the charts this morning or this evening, I should say, you can see here dollar Peeled off those highs late in the session yesterday, and now we're in a pullback phase here on that U.S. dollar. Same thing, except the opposite direction here, of course, on the euro. So we're going to be waiting to see here tomorrow. I'll tell you, if this ECB report comes out anything, right, anything like we think it's going to be, this is going to be nothing more than a nice pullback in the dollar, which means we are going to most likely have some incredible opportunities for gold, crude oil, and all the E-minis tomorrow at around 8.15, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. We'll be talking about that in real time tomorrow morning in our live trade room. What else happened today? How about the old soap opera out of Russia and Ukraine, right? As if we even trust a single word coming out of this area of the world right now. Apparently, my boy Putin, right, my buddy... Right, we go way back. We go, we go all the way back to this March. Right, that's how long we've been dealing with this. Uh, Putin introduces a seven-point peace plan, and approximately two and a half minutes 
afterwards, right? The the leader of Ukraine comes out. I, I can't recall the guy's last name. It's a long one, right? He comes out and basically says, I wouldn't trust a single thing he says, right? So I'm going, what is going on here? Why does anybody even, why is this front page news? Well, anyways, so supposedly there's a seven point peace plan coming out of Russia here. We shall, we shall wait and see if Putin takes a, I have a feeling they're going to meet with the tooth fairy, Santa Claus, right? We, we, we might see all the other, you know, of course the Loch Ness monster will be there, of course, to talk about this uh, seven point peace plan. I kid, but I hope it's true, right? I hope it's true. Factory orders. A surprising, a surprising factory orders report today showed additional strength in the U.S. manufacturing sector. That was this morning at 10 o'clock. The beige book this afternoon didn't really do very much for us. It it pretty much repeated the exact same thing that we saw uh, from the FOMC last month. Now, if you want to get a, if you want to get a breakdown of the beige book report, look below the video here tonight. And below the video, you're going to see a link below the video to read today's beige book report. It's a little bit entertaining, right? Some interesting information there. Uh, gold pushed 1270 today. Crude oil went right back to 95 again. I thought we had made some great progress yesterday, but remember, we talked about yesterday evening how we thought that crude oil had collapsed on low volume, and apparently it went right back to where it came from today. We'll take a look at the crude market in just a moment. Mini Russell also collapsed today as well, right? So the Russell also collapsing here today as well. So everything really settling into a sideways range ahead of what we can assume to be this highly anticipated report tomorrow morning. So tomorrow, 7.45 a.m., we got big news, and then we'll talk about it a little bit later on. We've got uh, very big news here throughout the day tomorrow morning. So we'll talk about the news in just a few moments. So around the world here today, peace talks in Ukraine. We haven't heard about ISIS and the crisis there in a while, right? President Obama vowed to hunt down ISIS here today bunch of thugs they are and of course gold edges higher crude pushes lower and again it feels like everything here is settling into a range bound scenario here until we get through at least tomorrow's statement from our good friend president draghi all right jumping in here now up to the mighty mini russell now just as expected the russell edges all the way up here right to the bottom of that sell zone now you'll notice We've got a bit of a wedge going on here right now. Now, if you're a student of mine, if you're a student here at SchoolTrade.com, we talk about some specific areas on the chart that when we hit those areas, we start to think about consolidation. And that's what we're seeing right now on the Russell. All right. So if you're a student with mine, you should be thinking about a very specific number that we talk about which identifies these consolidated ranges. And that's why I've, it, I've projected now another zone down here at 1121.5. So if you're a student of mine right now, heads up, we're definitely seeing in the big picture here a consolidating range. And of course, since we know the chaos theory and the theory of fractal geometry, we know that this can be boiled down now onto some much faster time frames. So Russell looking a little bit sideways right now on the daily chart, right? Now, obviously, if we keep pushing higher here, I'll be singing a different tune. But as of right now, though, it looks like we've got that price testing those highs and then collapsing right back down. Now, in the shorter term, looking at my 32 anchor chart, here's a pretty interesting chart you can see here right now. We got that long-term bull channel. We found this, as you can see here, if I can highlight it here, we found this more short-term bull channel. And you'll notice how they all line up right down around this 1166 area. Now, you know how we do this, right, guys? We keep it very simple. What's my trend? Trend is bullish. How do I know? Green clouds, right? Higher highs, higher lows, easy. Once I know my trend, then I look for my setup. Where's my setup? That's what we're waiting on right now. Now, we had a couple buy setups here, right? And we looked for those this morning, right? As we came down, we looked for some buys here. Didn't get anything out of it. So we continue to wait. The next buy zone here is at 66.6. .6. Now, we've got a couple of them here to use, right? Now, if you look closely here, 
If you're a member of mine, you've got all the tools that we build. And if you look closely here, of course, we got the easy one here at 66.6 .6 and 63.9. I've got 60.6, but then look inside here. I have a cluster of symmetry in here at 62.8, right? This is a symmetry tool you see here. I've got additional buy zones here at 57.9. And again, look closely here, students. There is a cluster of support right here, a cluster of symmetry right here. So guys, I know it felt like today the market would never stop dropping. But remember... These markets love to just rock you to sleep, right? And then right when you think it's bearish, bam, it catches you right off guard and jumps right back up, right? This wouldn't be the first time here where we had a bit of a sell-off, right? And then saw it rebound at the lows and come right back up. So we are staying focused right now. As I always say, we are we are strict in our conviction, but flexible in our approach, right? We are strict in our conviction. We are very strict on the bias of the upside right now, but we are flexible on our approach of capitalizing on this bullish move. Now, what I'm going to do is, is tomorrow morning, I'll be watching all of these levels with our students in the trade room, looking for the reaction of these levels and looking for buying opportunities. We're not blindly buying these areas, right? And again, we'll be doing this in real time tomorrow morning. So really three significant areas on the chart that we are looking for for tomorrow. And then heads up here, I've got two targets projected for you guys up top there, 94.5. And then there is the 1200 once again, 1203.5. Six. So looking good here on the Russell. Again, it was a little bit frustrating this morning. We didn't get a chance to really get much of a bounce there on that Russell. But something tells me we're going to be rewarded by that here very, very soon. We go drilling down a little bit closer here on the Russell. And you can see we're right at the low. We're right at the low of this big bull channel here, right? And this, of course, being the short-term channel from that 32 anchor, which we just talked about. So you can see we got a big bull channel here. Right, we get a bunch of symmetrical points below us, and we got this trend line. So now, if you're a student with me, you know about the three-point reversal pattern, right? So you know about the three. Wait, you don't know about the three-point reversal? You got to know that, guys. If you're a member of mine, go into your intermediate section and check out the section on entry patterns. If you're not a member of mine, well, I, I got to ask, what are you waiting for? Every day you lose money here without being a student. You could be you could be investing in your future. Now, this is what we're going to call a three-point reversal pattern. I've got a beautiful channel low. I've got that next 66.6 .6 area, right? So that area is from the 32. So we may not get the turnaround here, right? We may not get it very soon. We may have to wait for it to come down, right, and then buy it. Whatever the case may be, though, keep an eye on this very – very uh, clear and very obvious trend line overhead. If I buy this low here, I want to get through that trend line first, right? That will get me to the point where I have more confidence. So we've got that trend line here overhead. Now, here's the tough part. Right now, I'm going to do my best to give you guys some targets here overhead. But my job is relatively limited because the next time we see each other will be in 24 hours from now. So right now, I've got tentative targets at 78.3, 80.5, 83.8, and we'll throw in there at 87.9. So if we were to turn right now, these would be my two targets. If we go lower here overnight, which it does look like that might be the case, if we go lower here overnight and we end up reversing off of this area here, again, I'm going to be watching that trend line very closely and I'm going to use slightly different targets, right? So these targets will have to come down a little bit. So if we make a new low here, if we get below this uh, 68.5 area overnight, be aware, guys, these targets will be will be averaged down, right? They will be recalculated down. So right now we are we are teetering here on the sell side here in the short term, but right now we are neutral bullish in the short term right now, still looking to be a buyer. And again, I'm, I'm focused right now on this 32. And as of right now, there's no reason why we should be a buyer right now. I'm sorry, no reason to be a seller. Unless, of course, you want to go counter trend. But if you're going to be a seller right now, be aware you've got some targets here below you.
Remember, I want the easy money. I want the I want the trading opportunities that are so easy. It's like walking over and picking up a bag of cash. That's how easy I want them. And the easy money is going to come buying at these lows, right? So we buy at support in an uptrend, we sell at resistance in a downtrend, and right now, if I sell right now, I'll be selling at the lows, and we just simply don't like to do that in the long term because selling at a discount, selling at the low, it's just not good business. It's not good business practices. All right, guys? So careful out there right now, looking for a buy. If we want to sell, well, come back and see me tomorrow in our live trade room, and we'll give you guys more accurate information for the sellers. Moving here from the mighty mini Russell over here to that, that funny yellow metal, the gold futures. Now, again, markets felt like they had settled into a bit of a range today ahead of tomorrow's ECB report. Gold finally, finally, capital F, exclamation point, underlined, bold, italics, right? Finally got down to those lows. It took them long enough to get there. And now that they're there, they're kind of sitting here at these lows right now, right on top of this 1265.8. Now, as you look at this daily chart on the gold and you drill down now to the 32 anchor, you begin to see a little bit more of the big picture here. We haven't quite made it down to the lows of that bear channel, right? We're clearly bearish right now. And for the most part, this is pretty much the same chart that we had talked about yesterday. I've got a downtrend. I'm clearly bearish right now. And I've got targets waiting for me here at the lows of the channel. The 54.4, 46.7, right? You get all these targets waiting for me to the downside right now. We've got sell zones just hanging out here waiting to be hit. 73.4, 79.8, 93.1, right? These are all easy sell zones. But what we needed was we needed this price to come off these lows, get up into this area so we could sell it again. That's not happening right now, right? It looks like we've put together a little bit of a range here, right? Somewhere above that 65 and below that 73 Point four, right? So we are bearish on gold right now, right? Remember the three steps to success, right? My trend is down. I want to be a seller. Where do I sell? I sell at a bearish sell setup. Where would the setups be? No, well, there are three of them here. I just talked about 73.4, 79.8, 93.1. Those will be the next available three setups, right? There's actually five of them on this chart, but you get the point, right? So we're looking to sell at those setup areas. The third step, right, because there was three steps success after all, right, is the entry trigger. Now, where do you get the entry trigger? Well, you get the entry trigger by being a student in our trade room, I'll give it to you live in real time. Heck, I'll give it to you before it even triggers. You could also simply go and log into your course materials and learn all about the entry patterns, right? So we teach it in real time, right? And we learn and earn together. So gold right now, bearish on the gold, but we're waiting here to see if we can get into a sell zone. Now we go down to the, to the 16 anchor, and now the 16 anchor, this is, this is what I was talking about earlier. It definitely feels like we have settled right into this little range here, and you can kind of see those little arrows I've drawn on here. That looks like that's the range. How do I know that? How do I know that? Well, here's a good example where we had identified a sell zone, right? We identified a sell zone here, a sell setup. Right, so here's our sell zone, and we identified this area here yesterday evening, and of course, we come up and we test that sell zone, and this is where we expect to see traders react. Right, This is where, remember, that's what these areas are. Right, These are not brick walls. These are simply levels of support. In this case, it's resistance. Support and resistance are where traders are expected to react. That's all they are. In my trade room, I describe this as being electric, right? Electric fences. Every time we test it, this is right, it shocks you a little bit. But this is one of those electric fences that's on a battery. So every time it tests the zone, right, it's gonna give you less of a shock. And what happens is if we are not seeing 
if we're not seeing some excitement, if we're not seeing a reaction from that cell zone, well, that tells me one of two things is likely to happen. Either A, one, right? One A, I know, right? Like an EOS teacher. But A, I might just blow right through the cell zone because clearly I may have picked the wrong zone. Or B, and I'm thinking B might be what we see for tomorrow, which is we kind of sat here, went back up a little bit, right? So now nobody's being caught off guard by this, right? There clearly was barely any reaction to that zone. And so it would make perfect sense ahead of the ECB tomorrow to go sideways. The way I see it right now, we had a sell zone at 12.71 to 12.72.3. We went down, we went into that sell zone, we tested it, couldn't make a lower low. We're doing it again. So basically, I'm very suspicious. The fact that this is the second test of that sell zone, this is the second time we've gone into that setup. Usually what happens in this scenario, again, one of two things. Either we go sideways here, which would make all the sense in the world because you've got tomorrow's highly anticipated ECB announcement tomorrow morning at 745. Would make perfect sense for gold to be waiting for that news to be coming out. The other scenario here, which would also make perfect sense, would be for it to go right through this now. So in other words, the first time we hit that zone, that's when I want to look for that trade. The first time we hit the electric right fence, bzz, I want to take that trade short the first time it hits that area. But the second time it hits it, remember, it's an electric fence on a battery. So every time it hits that area, it's got a little bit right a little bit less of a charge and so this will be the second time we go into it if we don't get a reaction to this with a lower low that's the big clue here okay here's what I'm looking for if it goes higher I know exactly why right because clearly this 72 area was not the area for gold right that's okay no big deal our job is to find these areas and then test the areas for strength. So as we go lower, we hit the area, we look for the short. If we don't get the short, obviously we know not the right area, not the end of the world. So if we do keep going higher here, we've got more sell zones overhead that we can use for another selling opportunity. If we go sideways here, we know exactly what's going on. Para right? Basically, analysis paralysis ahead of the ECB's statement tomorrow morning. If we go sideways here, be very careful here on gold. If we go lower, well, then we're back to the races, right? Well, basically, right now, we have a chance right now to get short on gold, right? So right now, this is the second attempt at this sell zone. I'll take the second attempt, but I won't take the third or anything after that, right? So if it doesn't go here, we got some big problems. If it goes lower here, we're looking for shorts, and we have targets down below you. Now, you've got to take some profit off at this low, 61.9, and then try to hold a portion of that for a runner, let's say, at 1255, right? That's the low of this bear channel here. Now, the reason why I say take some profit off at 61.9 is because, you know, my gut is not a trading strategy. But right now, my gut tells me this thing goes range bound until we hear from the ECB tomorrow, all right? And possibly until we see Friday's non-farm payrolls. After we hear from the ECB tomorrow, if we don't get a new lower low, if we don't get out of this range here from 72, right, to 62, this, this area right here, if we don't get out of this range tomorrow after the ECB, we pretty much know now this becomes our range, buy the lows, sell the highs, and stay away from the middle, and we're going to be waiting for Friday's non-farm payrolls. We'll talk more about that tomorrow, and as you can see, there's going to be a little bit of interpretation to this tomorrow morning, so remember, don't go at this on your own. Come join me tomorrow in the trade room, and I'll walk you right through what we're seeing tomorrow morning at 820 when the gold market opens up. We still got a bias to the downside. We're still looking to the shorts on gold right now, but again, I'm, I'm watching carefully here at that sell zone right now. Last but not least here, on the black gold here now, the Texas T, we got the crude oil futures. 
Boy, I thought we had I thought we had those buyers beat yesterday, guys. I'll tell you, this is part about being a day trader. You never know what tomorrow is going to bring. And today was a great example of that. Literally up and down. Today we go right back up to where we came from yesterday. We actually went all the way to 96 today and then ended up settling right at 95. You can see we're really kind of tossing and turning here right now inside this area between 93 and 96. We knew this was going to be a little bit of a challenge. We knew this area was going to be a little bit of a challenge here on the daily chart because of this little buy zone here. So we definitely can tell why this is happening right now. Now, here's a 64 anchor chart. This is my 32 anchor chart times two. So all I did was double it. Very, very simple. And yesterday, we talked about how we are projecting a potential tumble here all the way to that 84, 85 area here by the end of the year once again this year, right? So we're keeping an eye on this. We have this strong downtrend, as you can see here right now. But boy, did we get hung up in this area right now, right? Very, very easy to see. Clearly, the market right now is perfectly comfortable with $94 a barrel right now on crude oil, right? The lower end of 92, the higher end of 96. So we are definitely trading in balance, right? We found value here about 94. Now, remember, guys, these markets don't operate in a vacuum. Prices rise when there's more buyers than there are sellers. Prices fall when there are more sellers than there are buyers, right? A little day trading 101. So the reality is, is the fact that we weren't able to go below 92 and we didn't go back above 96, that just confirms for us right now, we are definitely a balanced market personality right now. What does that mean? Well, that means that in order for us to get a new direction or some higher highs or lower lows, there needs to be some outside influence, right? That'd be a market profile term for you. There has to be some initiating activity and outside influence that prompts people to react, right? A hurricane announcement, a political disaster, right? Uh, and some more economic news. Maybe tomorrow's ECB report. That could be it as well. It feels like right now crude oil, gold, and possibly Russell have all settled into a little bit of a comfort zone here right now before we finish up this first week of September. Now, this was an easy one. If you recall yesterday on crude oil, we talked about the fact, if you remember, this was last week. Last week, we went higher. We come back after the break. Tuesday, we completely collapse. And if you remember my exact words last night, I said, the fact that we didn't get that lower low, that was a really big clue that although we were bearish, we definitely were not as strong to the downside as we may have, it may have felt like when we were collapsing off that high. Remember what I said last night? Those straight lines down, those are big, big, big red flags for us. We saw a low volume straight line down yesterday afternoon. And are we surprised? Are we really that surprised? Another low volume straight line right back up? No, not really, right? Big pops equal big drops. And remember, we identified this about 18, almost 24 hours ahead of time when we saw the fact that we didn't make that lower low, right? One of the things we talk about in our trade room every day is anticipating what may come next. Not predicting, but anticipating, right? What if price was to go higher? What if price was to go lower? What if price was to go sideways? And be ready for what those were, right? So, of course, we gave you guys a couple areas here overhead to sell, right? Blew right through them and basically went right back to where we came from. Now, if you're a member of mine, if you're a student at School Trade, you know this 96.12 and 95.71 is a very, very easy sign of what we call a price wedge, right, or a consolidating range. In other words, higher lows and lower highs. So the fact that we went right back to this area should be no surprise. And now you can probably see, as a student of mine, now you can probably tell where I got this 93.35. And, of course, this 93.25 is the same level we had from last night's newsletter. So we have definitely no higher highs. We got lower highs. No lower lows. We have higher lows. 
right? That's when we know it's time to treat this as a range bound, a consolidating wedge type of market personality. So we're buying the lows, we're selling the highs, and we want to do our best to stay the heck out of the middle right now, right? Buy those lows, sell those highs, stay away from the middle. And it looks like 94.50 is just about where that middle is right now. So be aware of that. Now, one time frame faster here. We go down to the 16, and you can see just exactly what we talked about earlier. I've got my range highs, my range lows. It's very easy to draw the trend line in. So right now, we are going to focus on selling short in the long term. But in the short term right now, buying lows, selling highs. And if somebody told me I had to choose what direction, it would definitely be to the sell side, right? Because we have that long-term bearish trend. So right now, our job is very simple. Be patient, sell the highs, buy those lows. As we're going lower, I have targets waiting for you guys at 94.67, 94.26, 93.88, and 93.35. Then, if we can come down all the way to those lows again, then we look to buy those lows and bring it right back up, bring it right back down, right? So we know we're going to look to buy the lows, sell the highs. And then one more thing here, guys. If price goes lower, I'm selling these highs. But what if price goes higher? What if something happens overnight? What if, you know, what, what if, what if something crazy happens here? There's a big move that happens overnight. What's our plan if price doesn't behave inside this range? This is always one of the most, this is always one of the most treacherous types of areas. We have to be very aware that a fake out breakout is, is going to stare us right in the face here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark up that high right there, right? There's my 96 even. That becomes my line in the sand. Now what I've got to do is my 96 even is a line in the sand. As I go higher here, I'm looking for a pullback. I need to make sure, though, that we stay above that 96 even, right? That's the key here. Do not be victimized by this. Goes up pulls back and you try to buy below 96 because you know what's going to happen now. Guys like me are going to sell those highs. So basically what I'm going to do here is with my eyes wide open here, looking for that FOBO, right? That fake out breakout. If we go up, I'm suspicious of a fake out breakout. Remember, we're still to the downside here right now. We're still bearish in the long run. So I'm definitely still looking for the short. I will entertain, though, if we see a dramatic personality here overnight. We've got a lot of news coming out. We'll talk about it in a moment. But if I stay above that 96, that's the key. Be a buyer, but be a buyer above 96. And again, remember, if you buy here, you are going counter trends. So be careful. Take that profit quickly and tighten up that trailing stop. I'll be focused on the sell side here right now, taking my profit off scaling out as we go lower and then looking to buy those lows again same thing on the downside if we happen to get all the way through these lows right we'll use this 95 this 9250 as the same thing right so get above the high above 96 get below the low 9250 and remember we're bearish here right now right we're, we're biased to the sell side right now on the crude all right guys don't force it tomorrow morning before the ECB announcement comes out. That's one very big thing I would not recommend. If the markets do not want to move well tomorrow before the ECB announcement, don't force them. However, I don't think we're going to have to wait that long. we got quite a bit of news on the schedule here for you guys for tomorrow. Starting here first, I've got, I've got news out of Australia here at 930. We then go into uh, Europe tomorrow morning. A lot of news in the U.S. And then they tried to pull a fast one on us this week, boys and girls. We got the crude oil inventories tomorrow morning as well. Let's dig in a little bit closer to this now. As we zoom in a little bit closer, we can see here we've got the retail sales from our good friends down under at 9.30 p.m. Eastern time here this evening. right? So be aware if you're trading out of Asia, 
trading in Europe. You've got some opportunities starting here this evening after 9.30. We then jump right here to the Bank of England announcement, right? They just had some really important news they released here from the Bank of England the past uh, the past few hours. I'm, I got to read through it here, but apparently they're adjusting some of their calculations for their GDP. Shouldn't be too big of a deal though, but tomorrow morning though, you've got that 7 a.m. Red Star news report tomorrow morning. Then, all eyes, all eyes focused on 7.45 a.m., the ECB announcement tomorrow morning at 7.45. In case you hadn't been paying attention, it's tomorrow morning at 7.45. We've got the ADP employment report tomorrow morning at 8.15. For some reason, I think I put that on yesterday's. I think that was on yesterday's calendar. It was clearly wrong. It'll be, it'll, apparently it's tomorrow here, guys. So 8.15 a.m. Now, the reason why I say apparently is because Monday was a holiday. And when Monday's a holiday, sometimes these news websites, they, they take their sweet time to get the schedule updated for what the uh, changing in events are. So tomorrow morning, I've got 7.45, 8.15. Now, also, to remember, guys, 8.30 a.m., that will be the that will be the press conference from the ECB announcement tomorrow. So you're going to have to really be careful here. 7:45. That's why I said earlier, after 8:30 tomorrow morning, that's when you should be able to start trading this thing. All right. Hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully we get something beforehand. But usually what happens is normally you're going to get a little bit of a response here at 7:45. But most professional traders know to wait until about 8.30 after Draghi puts his foot in his mouth in the unscripted live Q&A session, right? Can't wait to see him squirm tomorrow morning. Always a fun event. So 7.45 tomorrow morning, 8.15, and then we've got a bunch of Red Star news from the U.S. we got international trade and jobless claims here tomorrow morning, 8.30. And again, like I said... I have a funny feeling after 8.30 tomorrow, that's when we're going to start seeing this kind of thawing out after the ECB announcement. So be ready after 8.30 tomorrow morning. we got some, some more news out of Canada, the merchandise trade tomorrow out of the CAD. We've got 10 o'clock. Keep on moving here. We've got 10 o'clock, ISM non-manufacturing, right? Take out the manufacturing sector. This will give us an idea, right, of some other aspects of manufacturing here or other aspects of our of our economy right now, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. And then they tried to pull a fast one on us. 11 a.m. tomorrow morning, we've got crude oil inventories. Now, this is a very important topic here. Real briefly, guys, and we'll wrap up. Inventories are typically Wednesday morning at 10.30, right, for crude oil futures. If Monday is a holiday, which was the case today, then we know they're going to push that report back till 11 o'clock on Thursday. So here it is, right? It's always the same. Monday's a holiday. Unless there's something else at 11 o'clock on Thursday, it's almost always the following day at 11 a.m. What this means is, this means you've got a whole group of traders out there that are not used to trading crude on Thursday like this. Now, traders are human beings. Human beings are creatures of habit. What that means is this has a tendency to throw a lot of people off their game tomorrow. So be looking for slop and chop ahead of the news report. Usually it's not that bad, but it might be, again, tomorrow with that ECB uh, report at, 8, at 8.30. Uh, again, just be patient on crude tomorrow morning. We may see the personality really struggle because, again, a lot of traders, this is not how they usually do it, right? So there may be some traders out there tomorrow that decide to take the whole day off on crude. I don't think it's going to be the case, but just be aware. If it is really slow on crude tomorrow, that's why it's slow because the news for crude has been pushed until 11 o'clock. So stay patient tomorrow morning on crude. Stay patient for everything, but crude oil really might be the one we really got to be patient tomorrow because we got that 11 a.m. news report. Now, after the news comes out, don't forget, what's the thing we do? How do we always trade the reaction to inventories? We wait patiently, wait for a new direction to come out of that 11 o'clock news, and then trade the direction. Remember, the news itself tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock has very little to do with the way the market reacts to it, right? I know, but remember, this is crude oil. It has nothing to do with reality. It's all perception. Why do you think all the news out of the Middle East gets this thing moving so well? 
There's no concern over a supply of crude oil. The U.S. is now the second exporter of crude, right? What do we have to worry about? It's all speculation, right? So reality has nothing to do with the perception of supply and demand of crude. What that means is do not get wrapped up in the report itself. Stay focused on the reaction tomorrow after 11 o'clock. And around 11.15 tomorrow morning, we may see some late morning fireworks from all those crude traders tomorrow morning. So be ready for it. Again, stay patient here tomorrow morning ahead of the ECB announcement, especially if you're trading currencies or gold. After the ECB announcement, wait till about 8.30. That's when you're going to see, most likely, you'll see the best moves tomorrow after 8.30. We've got jobless claims, international trade, ISM non-manufacturing, and then remember, we'll be looking closely at crude tomorrow, <clears throat> excuse me, after 11 a.m., waiting patiently to see who takes control. All right, guys, that wraps up your nightly newsletter here for September 3rd, 2014. I want to thank you guys so much for stopping by the office here today. Don't forget, before you guys head out, join our copy of our free trial. We get a great free trial for you guys. You can learn all about what it means to be a student. We offer three levels of membership, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And we have someone standing by whose English is their first language, right, at our live online support on the lower right-hand side there. All right, we look forward to work with you guys. Don't forget to share this information with a friend. Come out and see us tomorrow morning as part of your free trial, or we'll see you guys in the room as a brand new student at School of Trade. Signing off now from our corporate headquarters here in Los Angeles, my name is Joseph. You guys have a great evening, and we'll see you tomorrow morning. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.